Welcome back to the show, everyone. A pleasure to see our next guest because, well, not only does he have great information for us, but I just take massive style cues from him as you well. You do. Oh, yeah, do. Gunhei Fat Choi, Fredly. How are you? Sanin Fai Lak. Gunhei Fat Choi to both of you. Yes. Thank Happy you New very Year. much. Happy New Year. Uh, you have the wrap up dinner happening this weekend for uh, the Lunar New Year, the Year mm -hmm. of the Dragon. There is, there has been much whining and dining, and there will continue to be throughout the week. Of course, there's the Chinese New Year parade yep. and much more eating. And so, the parade yes. will be, just as an aside, will be broadcast here on uh, Shaw TV and Shaw Multicultural as well. So Did you appreciate the segue into that? Yes, yes thank you thank very much. You, thank you, Loft the Grapefruit. Yes. Of course, and you are here you today to it. talk about Theata, and we're going to be talking about the Push Festival. The Push Festival. It is essentially the biggest performing arts festival that we have in town and it really brings together the talents of our local performing arts uh, scene with some of the most amazing acts all around the world yeah so this year in addition to you know Canadian companies we've got um, representation from New Zealand from Spain from Mexico Beautiful. all over the map and it really does kick off the year and the um, yeah the performing and arts. aptly named because uh, you know it's always a challenge I think uh, especially in the world of theater to get your production into a theater and and push festival because it's a celebration around the city you see some stuff and you see how vibrant the scene is here and how Vancouver. different I mean push is really about pushing the boundaries yeah. of yeah. our conception of what theater is or what performing arts is so it's beyond the the, the traditional uh, yeah. theater or performing arts that we know it so yeah. there's a lot of theater dance music multidiscipline gender yeah. bending site in. specific you name it they have it and you know Norman Armour has really assembled an incredible list of performances and you know it's impossible yeah. to check out all that is going on but make there some is, picks yeah there are 17 on just the main stage a couple yeah. I would really suggest that are still available the idiot um, that's Dostoevsky's. Dostoevsky, yeah, yeah, you have you to say it with accent. Very good, very good. Dostoevsky. <laughs> that's playing at Freddie Wood <laughs> Theater, and of course there's dances for a small stage, yeah. and that happens until the end of the run. Some great, great shows. And there's also some great stuff happening at Club Push, which is happening, taking place over at the Waldorf Hotel, and it's much what a more... great venue. I know, cabaret style, so grab a cocktail, grab a drink, grab a drink and just take in some really avant-garde performances and you know there's much respect for this festival because for most theater companies they work with push they work with Norman instead of competing and it's yeah. it really is That's a tribute great. to the yeah. showcase of incredible shows that you get to see here in our very own town you don't need to travel and see some of these okay, renowned well, companies. Okay well let's get yeah. your take on a couple of the productions. We're yes. going to start off with do you want what I have got a Craigslist cantata. Now this sounds <laughs> very this. interesting. I love this. And the two people involved, I mean, just marvelous performers. Bill Richardson and Veda Hill, the brain, uh, the brain children behind this incredible uh, new work. And, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Bill Richardson. And really, um, he is the master of words. And yeah. him working with Veda Hilly, who has been uh, an artist in, this, in the community and for many, many years. And she has a many, wonderful many sense of wit. Uh, I mean, in her mm -hmm. music, in her writing, in everything. She's got a great sense of humor. So can you imagine the two forces together? Yeah. And then combing through. Craigslist so, to find the material. Awesome. Are these and genuine Craigslist ads? Essentially, they yes, they are. So it really is clever how they have gone through and how many of us have gone through Craigslist and just read the ads just for the they humor. They can be hilarious. The absurdity. Scary. And, comical. you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and yet we have a connection to a lot of these because, you know, I'm, I'm the first to admit we all. You know, peruse yeah. them for um, the personals. Yeah. For absolutely, it's for, funny. Miss connections are yes, so funny. Yes, I all the saw time. you. Did yeah. anyone see me? Did yeah. anyone see me? I mean, it's uh, <laughs> the old saying is, you know, you learn more about a society by going through their trash, right? And yeah. very much that's what so. Can, you and learn you the know, priorities. And part of it is the humor, and they capture that in 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 terms of what some of the folks will want to sell, like a gil a guillotine. Why not? Only used once. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And Bill Richardson is so funny and so eloquent. I just love the way he presents things. Yeah. yeah. And then you have Aveda's musicality. You put that together and Brilliant. you get a very, very funny show. Very, very, very funny it, show. Loved it, hated it. I liked it. 
Nice. Uh, and for the only the reasons that you know. Like all of us, there's gonna be some parts that we're gonna think that are funnier than other. You yeah. know, yeah. if you think, you know, someone trying to sell hats that belong to her cats is funny and you know, someone singing to that for five minutes, then you know, you might have loved it more than I liked it. So there's all that. That kind sounds of stuff. like a Michael Eckford <laughs> loved it personally. I'm just saying. You know. And then of course there's the, you know, the, the, there's a thread that really pulls it all together and is that, you know, for all of these ads, there's a sense of wanting to be wanted, there's yeah. emotion, there's there's a personal connection. Yeah, sometimes whether, you just want to talk to a person or some yes, of these people. They just you want know, to have an and interaction. And so there is a connection that is made, and they do it brilliantly in 90 minutes. And a very, very brilliant cast that has such enthusiasm really nails okay, it. Okay, so that gets elected at the Review Theater until liked it. February 11th. You can go to artsclub.ca. Okay, next one at the Vancouver Red. Playhouse. Yes. Red. I have heard great things from my friends who have seen it. Yes, Red. It's a... Uh, uh, a Canadian theater co-production, Canadian stage theater, mm -hmm. and uh, it is playing at the Playhouse and very well directed by Kim Collier. And it really talks about uh, the abstract painter artist Mark Rothko. Mm -hmm. And you know, during his time in the um, 40s, 50s, he really came into his own. And really, he was commissioned to do what was then the biggest commission to create these incredible abstract pieces for yeah. the Four Seasons restaurant in the Seagram's building of New York. Yeah. And of course his career is fascinating for anyone that, that follows art or is interested in his life because like many artists he was kind of vilified at the beginning yes. and then celebrated at the end and he struggled mightily with both those sensations. And it was when he was being celebrated that he started to question yeah. art itself. Yeah. And you know this, this, this play is very philosophical so for all of us who are artists or people who are artistic really get into the meat of the conversation of what is art yeah. you know he questioned the value of art whether it is just meant to be hung above our fireplace mantles or yeah. in a restaurant is that what art has become and the business of art uh, the and, business yeah. of art and the commercialism and he talks about the upstarts at the time which was Andy Warhol and yeah. what he was doing was that really art and his foil is this his assistant that he really debates this issue mm -hmm. of art with played really well by a Ryerson grad named David Comer Certainly a name to keep an eye out for. And really, it's that philosophical question. And you know, his pieces are very abstract. And yeah. you know, at a point, I, w I was starting to tune out because it really started talking too heavily into you know, right. what is red? Technique and, yeah. and what, art and color. What do you and, see, yeah. young man? I okay. see red. And liked it's like, it, loved it, hated <laughs> it. I liked it. Okay. I liked it for the production values, for the strong acting. Yeah. Um, for me, it was a little too much of an insider for those who are artists. My partner loved it because yeah. he totally got the conversations. It got a little too philosophical for me, but aside from that, it worked. Okay. It worked. Good Fred, production. thank you so much. Okay, go to the website Push for the Festival. Push Festival to find out all the plays that are going on. There's tons of great stuff to see, uh, pretty much a little bit of everything. Very nice. We're going to take a break. We'll come back.